in the in these blue books were given out in chapter three jesus said unless one is born again they cannot enter the kingdom of heaven what does that mean to be born again does anybody know well he's not talking about a, a physical birth he's talking about a, a change of heart a spiritual birth it's where you realize you're a sinner the Bible says we've all sinned and fall short of God's standards of perfection to make it to heaven after a physical body dies. You must realize you're a sinner. That's number one. Believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his blood, and rose three days later. And then, the reason most people will not put their faith in Jesus Christ. You must repent of your sins. What does that mean to repent? Does anybody know? Well, it means instead of living the way you want to live, the way the world wants you to live, you know, the way your flesh wants you to live, the way other people want you to live, you come to the cross and realize you're not living the way God wants you to live. You know, everybody sins, you know, everybody's looking for a leader in this world, but you're going to be let down because man will always let you down. God will never let you down. So you come to the cross and realize your sin is nailed to the cross. No matter what you've done, he will forgive you. If you come to the cross, admit your sins to God and repent, it means a change of direction. Turn away from your sin. You know, Mark 15, 34, Jesus said on the cross before he took his last breath, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabbatani. It means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, at that moment, God left Jesus Christ and he placed all of our sins upon him. It's as if he committed your sin, your crime, but he never did anything wrong. The Romans ruled the world at that time, and they would put the accusation above the cross of the criminal, and it kept the crime rate down. You know, the accusation above the cross of Jesus Christ was, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. He didn't do anything wrong. He took your place and my place. That's all you got to do is receive him into your heart by faith. Yeshua, if you're Jewish, that's his Hebrew name, Yeshua. So, you know, he died for your sins. You just got to receive him. You want to do that right now? Would you like to know God right now in a personal way? We're not talking about any religion. People say, what religion are you in? You know, we don't believe in religion. Neither did Jesus. He never mentioned religion. He never mentioned Catholic. He never mentioned Jehovah Witness. He never mentioned Mormon. That's all man-made. The Bible doesn't talk about religion. It talks about faith in a living God and Him alone. Jesus was fully God and fully man. He was not a created being. He came down in the form of a man on the virgin birth. You guys know what we celebrated on Christmas? Do you know? Right, that's right, brother. Keep reading your Bible. That's right. My streak is Oh, good. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, it's not the virgin birth of Santa Claus. It's not about money. That's not what we celebrated at Christmas. It was the virgin birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He came into this world and then he died on the cross. Shed his blood. He did that for you and me. And it's all you got to do is receive him. And again, you know, he was on that cross, Mark 15, verse 34. Before he took his last breath, Jesus said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabbatani. It means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? See, at that moment, God left him and it's as if he committed all of our sins. He felt our guilt and our shame on the cross. And it's all you got to do is realize your sin is nailed to his cross. He took your place. And then you got to open up your heart and receive him. In Revelation 3.20, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. What door? The door of your heart. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with them and they with me. He's talking about the door of your heart. I can't open the door. I don't have the key to your heart. If I came to your house uh, tonight and I tried to open up your door while you were sleeping, my key doesn't fit your lock. It's not going to open the door. Only you got the key. You know, Jesus can't even open the door. He's not going to kick the door down. He wants you to invite him in. He wants you to invite him in. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. You want to let him in right now? You want to know when you die you'll go to heaven? Would you like to know that all your sins are forgiven past, present, and future? Because you will never be perfect as long as you're in your physical body. He died for all your sins. You just got to acknowledge your sin, that you're not perfect, and ask him to forgive you. You want to do that right now? Bow your head, wherever you're at. 
You could pray it now out loud by yourself when you're at home tonight by yourself. God is everywhere. You guys ready? Mean it from your heart. Don't look at me. I can't forgive your sins. A priest can't forgive your sins. The Pope can't forgive your sins. Uh, religion can't forgive your sins. Only Jesus Christ can forgive your sin. You guys ready? Mean it from your heart. Think about God. Wherever you're at, think about God. Just pray, Lord Jesus, I admit I am a sinner, but I'm truly sorry for my sins. I thank you for loving me and caring for me. I thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood and rising three days later to pay for my sins. I ask you now, by faith, to come into my heart and be my personal Lord and Savior and forgive me of every sin, every wrongdoing I've ever committed. And I promise to follow you and the Bible the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you guys. If you prayed that prayer, you know, I prayed that 25 years ago and I meant it. No, I'm not perfect. If you prayed that and you meant it, you're really sorry to all your sins up to right now, God honors that prayer. And all your sins are forgiven. He died on the cross for all your sins, past, present, and future. Isn't that great news? You know, you don't see a lot of good news on TV. It's all negative garbage. Because the devil is the ruler of the world that we live in. You know, when Adam and Eve disobeyed God and they ate from that tree in the Garden of Eden, they handed the deed of the earth over to the devil. Now he's the ruler and the prince of the power of the air, Ephesians 2 tells us in the Bible. He's the ruler of the world. God created a perfect world for us, but they handed the deed over to the devil. It's like when you sell your house, you sign the deed to the new, new owner. It's not your house anymore. So unfortunately, God created a perfect world for us to live in. The Bible says in Genesis 1, he created everything in six days. And then the last verse in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, the Bible says, Then God saw that everything he had made indeed was very good. The evening and the morning were the sixth day, and God rested on the seventh day. And then, unfortunately, Adam disobeyed God. Adam and Eve ate from a tree. God told them not to eat from it. Because of that, we all inherit a sinful nature. We're all held accountable for our own sins when we stand before God. But if you prayed that prayer, all your sins are forgiven. But now you want to live for God. How? Number one, read your Bible every day. If you guys prayed that prayer, we'll give you a Bible free. You know, I know a lot of the, you know, the Bible's hard to understand. That's why people don't read it. But you know, it's the best-selling book in the world every year, but read by less than 15% of the population on a regular basis. You know, I would recommend get a New Living Translation, NLT. It's a real easy version to understand of the Bible. NLT, New Living Translation version of the Bible. If you want to really understand the Bible, Read the Bible, pray without ceasing, get into a good church. We go to a church called Calvary Chapel. www.calvarychapel.com See if there's one in your area when you get home. I know a lot of you guys are tourists. You're from out of town, out of state, out of the country. You know, when you get home, we go to a church called Calvary Chapel. See if there's one in your area. Calvarychapel.com They're all over the world. And when you get home, we want you guys to get one of these. It's called a speaker. Go to your local police or city. Get your permit. Tell them where you're going to go preach. And, you know, God's looking for people all over the world. If we can do it here in Santa Monica, you can do it when you get home, where you're from. And we're giving out this free Christian literature. You guys can get any language you want free. It's called the Fellowship Track League, Lebanon, Ohio.